Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question is, can I analyze the case of the Gwyneth Paltrow ski collision and the subsequent trial? Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing by this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoyed this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I will put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. First, I'll look at the background of this case, move to the timeline of the incident, a summary of the trial, then offer my analysis. Gwyneth Paltrow is a well-known actress who had a productive early career, faltered for a while, then revived her career to some extent. She is also known for her company called Goop. The name of this company would be more consistent with its behavior if it started with the letter P instead of the letter G. Goop sells expensive products and offers pseudoscientific treatments like ones based on energy healing. It has been criticized for deceptive marketing and making false claims. The company allegedly claimed that their products were clinically proven to treat mental health conditions like obsessive compulsive disorder, depression, and anxiety. Goop promoted energy stickers, which they claimed were made from the same conductive carbon material that NASA used to line spacesuits. The company sold eggs made of jade and recommended that the eggs be inserted into female genitalia. The marketing material claimed that deploying the eggs would bring positive energy and love, increase muscle tone, lead to hormonal balance, regulate menstrual cycles, and increase feminine energy in general. When the egg was drained of energy, it could be recharged in the full moon just the way a person would recharge a crystal. Goop had to pay $145,000 for their false claims. This was probably nothing to a company that size. Gwyneth Paltrow sustained a lot of backlash for promoting nonsense. Her behavior underscores the danger of magical thinking combined with seemingly endless resources available to promote it, otherwise known as the Oprah Winfrey effect. Now moving to the timeline of the incident. On February 26, 2016, Gwyneth Paltrow was skiing at the Deer Valley Resort in Park City, Utah. She was on the beginner ski run when a collision occurred between her and a retired optometrist named Terry Sanderson. Terry claimed he was skiing in front of Gwyneth when he heard a scream like King Kong. Gwyneth then slammed into his back and knocked him down hard. Terry was face down in the snow and unconscious. Gwyneth did not attend to him. Rather, she continued down the mountain. He was later taken to an emergency room and diagnosed with four broken ribs and a concussion. Gwyneth Paltrow had a different story about what happened. She was watching her children, who were also skiing, when Terry skied directly into her back. They both fell to the ground. Gwyneth yelled at Terry, quote, You skied directly into my blanking back, unquote. He replied, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Gwyneth left the scene without asking if Terry was okay, but she did this because she was very upset. A ski instructor that Gwyneth hired remained at the scene and assisted Terry. Gwyneth said that she had pain in her back and in her knee. She sent a text message to her ski instructor that read, That guy sort of hurt me. I'm going to get a massage. Over the next few years, Terry allegedly reached out to Gwyneth Paltrow's representatives asking for a multi-million dollar settlement. In 2019, Terry filed a lawsuit against Gwyneth Paltrow. He claimed that he had sustained a brain injury and was looking for $3.1 million in damages. He characterized the collision as a hit and run. Gwyneth filed a countersuit about a month later, saying that Terry plowed into her back and delivered a full body blow. Gwyneth admitted that her injuries were minor. She only sought her legal fees and one dollar in damages. In 2022, part of the lawsuit against Gwyneth Paltrow was dismissed. A judge threw out claims that Gwyneth inflicted emotional distress, ruled that the incident was not a hit-and-run ski crash, and said that Gwyneth Paltrow's behavior after the collision was reasonable. Terry was only left with the claim that Gwyneth negligently caused injury. He reduced his damages to $300,000. Now moving to a summary of the trial. On March 21, 2023, the case went to trial in Park City, Utah, in front of an eight-person jury. 
Much of this summary is paraphrased. The opening statement set the tone for the trial. Terry's attorney suggested that Gwyneth Paltrow was looking up the mountain and to the side while skiing down the mountain. He described Gwyneth as a wealthy and experienced skier who maintained a so-what attitude toward the collision. Gwyneth Paltrow's attorney noted that there are inherent risks when skiing. It is dangerous and collisions happen. Gwyneth was taken out from behind by Terry. The symptoms that Terry claims to have were caused by aging, and Terry was obsessed with his lawsuit. There was only one witness to the collision, other than the people who collided. A man named Craig Ramone was skiing with a group of people, including Terry. Craig was an acquaintance of Terry. He was about 30 to 40 feet away when the collision occurred. Craig said he heard a scream and saw a skier slam into Terry's back. This testimony made it seem like Gwyneth Paltrow was at fault, although Craig also implied that Terry's competency as a skier had declined rapidly before the collision. Gwyneth Paltrow testified that Terry skied directly into her back. She was knocked to the ground and confused. She thought it could be a practical joke or somebody was doing something perverted. Gwyneth testified that she did not scream when she was hit, which contradicted the testimony from the witness. She admitted that she yelled at Terry using an expletive. Terry's daughter testified that after the collision, her father became an angry person. He became consumed with righting the wrong. This testimony kind of made Terry seem obsessed. During Terry's testimony, he said that he was hit in the back hard right at his shoulder blades. It was a serious, serious smack. He is no longer able to ski and has memory problems. Gwyneth Paltrow's attorney asked Terry about an email he sent in which he said, I'm famous. Terry explained his behavior by saying it really wasn't him. Rather, quote, it's the other personality that's inhabiting my body right now, unquote. Gwyneth Paltrow's children did not see the collision. Their statements were introduced through depositions. Her son said that he saw someone uphill from his mother right before the collision occurred. Her daughter said that when she was with her mother at lunch that day, Gwyneth mentioned someone, quote, ran right into my back, unquote. Both of these recollections corroborate Gwyneth Paltrow's account. A number of experts also testified during the trial. For the most part, I think they helped support the argument made by Gwyneth Paltrow. During closing arguments, Terry's side argued that Gwyneth Paltrow was a good person and not a liar, but her version of the story does not hold up. Gwyneth Paltrow's attorney said that Gwyneth was pounded like a punching bag by a man who likes to be in the spotlight. On March 30, 2023, the jury found that Terry Sanderson was 100% at fault. Gwyneth Paltrow was awarded $1 in damages, the symbolic amount that she was asking for. Terry Sanderson is also on the hook for Gwyneth Paltrow's legal fees. Now moving to my analysis. Here are my thoughts on a few areas that stood out to me in this case. Item number one, there is a principle in the world of skiing where a downhill skier has the right of way over an uphill skier. Much of the trial was really about trying to figure out who was uphill and who was downhill. Presumably, whoever was uphill would have been at fault. Item number two, did the jury reach the correct verdict in this case? A major part of figuring out the truth in this case was evaluating the credibility of Gwyneth Paltrow versus that of Terry Sanderson. The only witness to the incident was acquainted with Terry, therefore his testimony could be biased. Both Gwyneth and Terry had damaged credibility coming into the trial. Gwyneth Paltrow's company had promoted its products by making unscientific claims, and Terry appeared to be obsessed with his lawsuit. Ultimately, at least according to one jury member, one of the experts testifying for Gwyneth Paltrow convinced the jury that her version of events was true. I also think that Gwyneth Paltrow came across on the stand as genuine, albeit a little bit peculiar. She seemed disconnected from regular people when she replied to a question about the cost of the incident by saying, well, we lost half a day of skiing. Terry did not fare well on the stand. He seemed arrogant and entitled. He argued that his memory was damaged, yet he did not appear to have memory problems. His credibility was greatly eroded by the social media posts featuring him traveling around the world after the incident, when he was supposed to be suffering 
from horrible pain. I think the jury did reach the correct verdict in this case. There is no way to know the truth for certain, but Gwyneth Paltrow was more believable than Terry Sanderson. Item number three. During the testimony of Gwyneth Paltrow, she described the collision in a way that made Terry seem like he was inappropriate. She suggested that there was a grunting noise and his body was pressed up against her. I don't know if this is true. I think this might have been an effort by Gwyneth to strike out at Terry a bit to get a little revenge from the stand. Her effort was probably successful. This testimony did not help him. Item number four. As Gwyneth walked out of the courtroom, she bent down near Terry and said, I wish you well. This may just have been an attempt to be gracious and to bury the hatchet, or it could have been a euphemism for a two-word phrase concluding with the word you. Not thank you, although the first word also ends with the letter K. My guess is that Gwyneth was planning that move from the beginning, rehearsing every moment of it carefully. She wanted to get her last measure of revenge against a man who filed a frivolous lawsuit against her. If this was her intent, then Gwyneth brilliantly delivered her sarcastic line. Item number five, what do I think happened in this case? This is just a theory, my opinion. Terry Sanderson used to be a very good skier, but by 2016, his skills had eroded significantly. He slammed into Gwyneth Paltrow, which created two different feelings for Terry. One, Terry was embarrassed because he was at fault and wanted to prove that Gwyneth was actually responsible. Two, Terry was starstruck without actually having been struck by a star. He wanted his 15 minutes of fame. Terry relentlessly pursued legal action against Gwyneth Paltrow, and now he has to pay for his poor decision. His reputation as a money-hungry celebrity chaser has now been confirmed. This brings me to item number six. How did Gwyneth Paltrow fare at the trial as far as her reputation? Gwyneth was in a good position coming into the trial as far as reputation because she really couldn't do anything to make it worse. It's an understatement to say that she is not well-liked by the public. I think overall, Gwyneth Paltrow gained some points during the trial. She was vindicated as far as the collision, and all her digs at Terry were clever, albeit not subtle. Gwyneth Paltrow, of course, did not end up unscathed from the incident. The trial resurrected stories about her nonsensical claims and magical thinking. She tragically wasted her time in court, and she had to contend with the horrible recollections of losing a half day of skiing. Now moving to my final thoughts. The case of Gwyneth Paltrow and Terry Anderson can be summed up in this way. A spectacle maker saw a shot to see stardom by spuriously accusing a showbiz and sly self-help specialist after suddenly slamming into her on a ski slope. He stated that he suffered a serious smack, but the silliness selling starlet would end up smacking him around with sarcasm. Those are my thoughts on the case of Gwyneth Paltrow and Terry Sanderson. Please put any opinions and thoughts in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be informative. Thanks for watching.